Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this will be a short live stream. I uh, decided to go ahead and uh, put this Asus F17 gaming laptop to test. It has a uh, Intel Core i5 11th generation, uh, 2.8 gigahertz, eight cores. It has uh, 16 gigs of DDDR4 RAM. It has a uh, GeForce RTX uh, 3050 with uh, 8 gigs of GDDR6 RAM. And it has a, uh, you know, NVMe solid state drive, uh, 1 terabyte, which is more than enough. Uh, pretty cool cooling system. It also is capable of uh, adaptive sync and a G sync, which is the same thing G sync, adaptive sync with 144 hertz uh, refresh rate with IPS panel um, so I'm gonna put put it to the test I'm gonna go ahead and crank everything up to the ultra right now I'm at uh, 1440p ultra settings and uh, seems to be handling pretty well there is a bit of a heat coming out of the the gaming laptop as it should be but uh, overall I have to say that I'm very impressed the way it looks and also the way it handles so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off with this MIG this is a MIG-29 Falcom on the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and without any further ado we're gonna go ahead and take off I don't have any audio I have to turn off my audio because YouTube these days it's uh, someone is flagging my videos uh, because of the audio sound effects etc etc I'm just tired of claiming all those videos you know uh, some sad bastards out there are just hitting the flag because of uh, the sound effects you know the sound effect of the afterburner and sound effect of uh, you know whatever any kind of sound effect you know some some sad idiot out there who's got nothing else to do is gonna be flagging my videos and and you know having me go through all that trouble to claim it now I can claim it and I can I can reinst reinstate that you know uh, copyright free thing but the problem is I don't want to go every single time through the whole claim and, and claim it you know uh, so I turn off the audio because I just don't want to have a headache of dealing with that nonsense, you know. Because quite frankly, I don't have time to be claiming my, you know, uh, to writing a claim to uh, to overturn that ridiculous crap. Meaning claim means that I'm claiming that, you know, it's a fair use and therefore it shouldn't be, you know, flagged shouldn't be blocked the video shouldn't be blocked etc etc I guess the YouTube has this automatic uh, automatic uh, automated system like a programmed system every time somebody flags it multiple times it recognizes it as, as, as a real threat da 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 that it's really uh, A copyright and this copyright video needs to be blocked so I'm trying to avoid that basically so that's why you're not hearing any audio you're just gonna hear my voice same thing happened to me in a Grand Theft Auto uh, even yesterday I was I was uh, copyrighted because of a sound effect from a cell phone from a cell phone sound effect so anyway uh, that's the reason you're not hearing the the audio. Are we gonna go ahead and take off? Nicely, lift off. I've seen some videos out there, uh, people saying that uh, the Falcon MiG-29 would not be much of a use to the Ukrainian army. I think that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, 
having some air support is better than not having any air support. I think that would tremendously help Ukrainian army to take out uh, the rockets, uh, thermobaric uh, band weapons, missiles, chemical weapons. They'll be able to take out a lot of stuff that would protect the citizens. Uh, so having the uh, MiG-29s in their possession would definitely help Ukrainian Air Force, absolutely. So people who say that uh, that these MiG-29s would not help, uh, that's a bunch of nonsense. Of course they would help, big time. And we need to figure out the way how to send it to them, honestly. A lot of people are saying, why MiGs? Why not F-16s? Why not, uh, you know, F-14s or F-15s? That's because Ukrainian Air Force, it's not familiar with F-15 or F-16 or F-14. They're only f flown uh, MiGs. That's all they're familiar with. Now imagine how long it would take for <laughs> for the uh, Ukrainian Air Force to learn how to use MiG uh, uh, F-16 to learn how to fly F-16. Right? That would take a long. That would take months and months of training for them to successfully learn how to use F-16 or let alone F-15. Right? So this is why they're requiring these old MiG-29s. I know they're old crafts. They're they're as old as F-14, basically Tomcat. Even though Tomcat's more superior, but having some air support, it's better than not having any air support. That's my whole. Uh, That's my whole uh, point here. As I stated previously, uh, this MiG-29 handles pretty well. Uh, maneuvering's pretty good. My only complaint about this MiG is the, uh, the bug that's implemented and that bug is the afterburner. Uh, you can't properly taxi out because of that bug that's in there. And I'll show you once I land. There's a bug in the game that um, constantly... Like, for example, if you want to taxi out, right? You want to taxi out this airplane to go to the runway. It's really hard to, to taxi out this airplane because... It has a bug. As soon as you move that thruster just a little bit, the afterburner kicks in. And once the afterburner kicks in, you're going, you know, 500, 600 nautical miles. And, you know, you can't taxi out 600 nautical miles on the runway. <laughs> so they need to fix that bug. Hopefully there's an update, which I'm pretty sure it will be. But it's still a sexy airplane, you know. I know it's old; it's as old as I am, forty years. But for a forty-year-old uh, jet fighter, it's still capable. It can still carry a lot of uh, rockets, bombs. Uh, so you could put about twenty-eight rockets and uh, maybe a couple of very heavy uh, bombs to level a uh, couple of uh, buildings or whatnot. So it could still, you know, not to mention the uh, the rockets, the missiles that could take out uh, another airplanes, you know, out there. I know that Russia has more superior airplanes, but my whole point is this. It's better to have something in the sky than nothing. Having something in the sky could help stop you know, the bombardment of innocent civilians like in Moropool. Uh, they could take out certain Navy ships with this. Uh, they could put... They could give a lot of problems to Russians by having these MiGs. And that could avoid 
unnecessary casualties of civilians because we all know that uh, uh, Putin's regime it's deliberately uh, bombing the civilian buildings so this could avoid that from happening because they would give them a lot of trouble like they wouldn't be able to to freely fly and bomb whatever they want to bomb because there would be you know a big 29s in the sky we got to figure out the way how to get these MiGs to them I can't believe it's been a month now a month since this war and we're still debating how to bring those MiGs to them come on guys the more we wait to to give them those MiGs the more blood on our hands you know I blame the the, the Western politicians I blame the US I blame the Europe I blame the NATO those civilian casualties is because of us Politi you know politicians who failed to do anything to stop it you could have stopped that but since you guys are so afraid of Vladimir Putin you're so goddamn afraid of this little tiny man you have blood on your fucking hands people have died because you don't have the balls you don't have the courage to do what's fucking necessary to do United States and 29 of its allies would crush both naval and air force and infantry and battalions of Russia they would have crushed them and I'm not kidding not only would, would we be able to crush them but we would be able to secure their nuclear warheads and disarm their nuclear warheads so they cannot use them I really don't understand uh, why are we just sitting on the sidelines Vladimir Putin has declared world war on everybody he's threatened everybody he already showcased that he is a bloodthirsty maniac he has demonstrated that he's a killer I mean what are we waiting for Hitler on steroids well you're gonna have a Hitler on steroids if we just sit on the fucking sidelines and do nothing and do fucking nothing and then when it's too late then we get involved why do we have to do that every single time even during World War two even during World War through it took a little while for Franklin D Roswell to get involved in the World War II. Uh, why do we always have to wait for a tragedy to happen, for a Pearl Harbor to happen? Why we gotta wait for Pearl Harbor? Why do we have to wait for 9-11? Why do we have to wait for some kind of a fucking tragedy? Why we have to wait for things to get fucking worse for us to get fucking involved? What kind of superpower military are we if we're too chicken shit to get involved because we are afraid of a fucking bloodthirsty dictator I, I really think we have become soft our politicians our leaders have really become soft too damn soft no one seems to have any balls no one seems to have any courage to do the right thing the right thing this is not a war against Russia the reason Russian people are suffering it's because of Vladimir Putin this is the war against a dictator that's controlling a big country and we're just sitting all of the world is being intimidated by one guy by one little man this is this look this makes us look weak this makes us look bad and I'll just leave it at that anyway getting back to the MiG-29 uh, unfortunately you cannot load up any weapons unlike the F-16 on the F-16 you can load up a bunch of rockets missiles heat seeker missiles and whatnot uh, on the F-16 but on this one you cannot do that unfortunately uh, 
you can however load up the fuel you can see the two fuel tanks over here uh, load up on the left and the right wing let's uh, let's do some uh, low flying maneuvers with this one let me uh, just go ahead and uh, go a little bit lower yeah, here we go, like that, like that. Nice. Very nice. Let's get a bit lower down to the uh, to the surface and slow down the speed. I want to see how well it handles that. Seems to be handling it pretty well. Not bad. I, I mean, like I said, you guys will be very happy with uh, the way this airplane maneuvers. But what you're not going to be happy about is the uh, the bug of the afterburner. That's uh, inside this game. Hopefully with the new update, that will be fixed. Another thing I would like to see, if possible... Uh, I would love to see a DLC called uh, Microsoft uh, Combat Simulator. I would love to see that, you know, or Microsoft Flight Combat Simulator uh, DLC, like a, a flight combat simulator. If they would add that, I think they did it once upon a time in the 80s called uh, uh, Flight Combat Simulator. I would love to see that come back. I would love to see a Flight Combat Simulator. That would really add so much to the multiplayer, let me tell you, man. That would add even more to the uh, to the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Not only would you get more of a commercial pilot, pilot which you already have, you, but on top of commercial flight uh, pilots, you would also get uh, the military, you know, Air Force pilots as well, jumping in from DCS to this to check out the uh, the combat flight simulator, which would be the Microsoft flight combat simulator. If they do that, I think Asobo would have really uh, probably one of the, the most complete Microsoft Flight Simulators, period. And then you can bring the Apache helicopters, AH-64Ds, Black Hawks, uh, so much. I think that would be a lot of fun. And of course, they can, they can limit, like, where you can fight, like, they could limit like the cities and you cannot do it in the cities you would have to do it on a specific locations that'd be fine by me I would have no issues with that honestly that wouldn't bother me and I understand why they would exclude you uh, flying and having the aerial combat uh, over the cities for the obvious reasons but I like wouldn't have a problem like in a Nevada desert having these uh, aerial combat uh, fights against your friends, against uh, another players out there who are flying. I wouldn't mind having that. Like, uh, 
that'd be fine by me. Yeah, this thing maneuvers really good. Very nice. Look at the way it's cornering, man. At the uh, low fly <laughs> maneuvers. This is very low flying right here. On the mountain range. At about 360 uh, knots. Wind speed. Pretty good, man. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Now let's go even lower. Hold on. Let's go even lower. Let's see what this thing can do. Let's use the afterburner. Let's go a little bit faster. Here we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Nice, very nice. Uh, let's take off a little bit up in the uh, in the air. And then they say, "Ooh, but these MIGs wouldn't help much." Come on, of course they would help. It's better to have some air. Uh, defense the no air defense There we go. Nicely done. Nicely done.
the sensitivity of this uh, MiG-29, it's probably one of the best I have ever uh, tried so far. But there's that one problem, that afterburner on taxiing on the runway, that bug called the afterburner bug. But other than that, man, uh, this MiG-29, I definitely say go ahead and, and purchase it, buy it. It's available on the Xbox and uh, PC, meaning the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. This is uh, Rocky Mountains uh, Range in uh, British Columbia, Canada. Actually, I'm going to have a podcast on Friday, 2 p.m., with uh, one of the Brandon's uh, friends. He's a pilot, and uh, I'll talk to him about what it takes to be a pilot and uh, just the whole experience, like what it consists of to be a pilot and what it takes to be a pilot. So that's going to be on Friday, 2 p.m., be very interesting so you guys want to tune in on that now if you do notice the slowdown the slowdown it's not due to my computer the slowdown is due to the uh, the server and the photogrammetry, the data that's being collected from the server, you know. And that's why you see that slowdown once in a while, because the, the, the server has to render the terrain, geometry, all of that stuff needs to be rendered. And that's why you're seeing that slowdown once in a while. We're going to take it easy a little bit here. We don't have to go too crazy. Also, for those of you who are interested in um, Digital Combat Simulator World DCS, they finally released um, AH-64D, which is a... Uh, Apache helicopter, famous Apache helicopter with a hellfire and, and it's just a it's a helicopter from hell basically no enemy no enemy forces want to see an Apache helicopter AH-64D um, so the uh, Apache AH-64D helicopter it's already out uh, and I think uh, Eagle Dynamics did a fantastic job. I uh, saw the video from Matt, Matt Wagner. He uh, showcased like just how realistic that uh, Apache AH-64D is. And, and uh, I think if you learn all the ins and outs of that AH-64D, I think you could go to the uh, U.S. Army and you could honestly jump in on it and you could start flying that thing. <laughs> it's uh it's it's expensive you know people say why it's so expensive 
why is it $64.95? Why are you paying that much? The reason you're paying that much, it's because it's the true replica of what Boeing with the US military has created way back in the 80s, uh, the AH-64D, uh, which is the Apache helicopter. They do have upgrades, obviously, since 1980s, 1990s, and 2000. They have upgraded this Apache AH-64D with a new technology and whatnot. Uh, but the skeleton is still the same. You know, it's still the same design. But it's a very accurate replica. So basically, the reason you're paying $64 is because you're getting uh, the real simulator of AH-64D, Apache helicopter. And that's why you're paying that price tag. Yes, you can also use a virtual reality on it, but you're going to need a beefy PC. Uh, uh, you know I mean, at least a 2060. 2070 will get the job done you know the latest uh i guess ninth or eight well ninth to tenth generation of uh i7 processor will get the job done even the i5 processor uh tenth generation should get the job done or even a ninth generation with the 16 gigs of ram you should be able to handle it but anyway that's available for those of you guys who might be interested in uh, Apache AH-64D. I'm going to maneuver a little bit lower. Inside the uh, the cockpit, it's an old-fashioned, you know, obviously, Soviet console. you got to remember, this is 40 years old, so the instruments and the gauges are very old, as they should be. This is where your fuel is, your fuel uh, pumps and everything, your jettison fuel. And on the right side, this is where your uh, batteries are and alternator and all that jazz, which is on, on this side over here. And then this is your canopy over here. The windows can be folded if you want to. But they're not really, they're not really that accurate. I'm, I mean, honestly, the mirrors barely have any reflection, so they need to do a little bit more of a, of a job. <laughs> I think what they need to do with this airplane is they need to work on the textures inside the cockpit and make it more detailed. And then, of course, they need to fix that afterburner bug that's uh, implemented with this uh, airplane. So that's another thing they need to work on. But other than that, I think uh, I think it's well worth the twenty bucks. Um, I would personally wait for an update, and then once they release the update, then I would buy it.
but overall it runs pretty good especially the uh the maneuvering the maneuvering on the smig 29 it, it's surprisingly better than than the f-22 honestly i think that f-22 raptor still needs more of uh of updates they need to patch more updates on that f-22 raptor uh because that's the most advanced tactical stealth jet fighter on the planet and they need to like work on some more updates it's good i could tell people that raptor is good but it could be hell of a lot much 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 better that's the whole point very smooth No, it's zero, minus zero. Okay, there's one passing 500. Clear, we're passing to 3,000 feet uh, left turn, I think, 240. Passing 3,000 left, 240. Killer on his lead, Squawk. 
aan de elite sport. Kennen we voor de contact Dutch Mill de frequency 397-275 van mij vrij. That's fine by me. Sure. You want to do one? I can't even hit the pickup button. Let's go, got you loud and clear. I'm uh, ready to copy. Smell, fist, run off. The range is descending to zero, zero, fist. for a GPU 38, elevation 06, the target coordinates 31 uniform, Foxtrot uniform, 26857, say again, and last numbers. Good evening, Bebel 630 Sherman, got your line of clear on me. This was just a practice radio chatter. It's not real. Tiger 1 and 2, both out of clear, positive contact, control service, recycle your squad 1501 in sequence. 1501 in sequence, Tiger. Tiger 1 and 2, Bebel 630 Sherman, got your line of clear on me. So that ten by and I'll come up to get descending ten. The delta is one of the for me C level, the thin D, but I'm gonna try to drop cast on the ten, I might keep up on the delta three and six five from zero five five. Confirm we're uh, scheduled for the eastern TRS two five. Yeah, the safe firm you can use the western delta as well, and they what is not uh, flying inside Delta. setting up in the north uh, of the TRA, uh, we're not going to use uh, TRA 10 for this moment, uh, 200. That was copied there that you're not going to use the TRA 10. See, not a mile trail, that's wrong at 300. No go. 
Hicker, uh, but uh, we will float to the north this time. Roger, so uh, Rado will need uh, the uh, 0 for this mission? That is Hicker. Sounds copy. Uh, five minutes prior on vehicle and a fire for the end, please. Final uh, 310. Five zones cleared all maneuvers on angels, inbound to anchor. Thanks. It's funny, I'm, I'm actually following their coordinations of low flying and <laughs> the only problem is I cannot use the targets because uh, the targets are not activated uh, on a microflight simulator. Only problem is uh, the fulc the fulcrum MiG twenty nine didn't have laser back then laser targeting system. That's uh, F sixteen by the way. <laughs> but hey, touche, touche. Oh, it is Fulcrum. Oh, look, they did call it out. <laughs> they did call it out, Fulcrum. They did. They did call it out, Fulcrum. To go out seven up, seven feet up northwest. No, that's the F sixteen. Tiger 
I guess I'm Tango One. I'm proceeding to the northwest. It would be cool to have F-16 and the F uh, MiG-29 fly together in formation. Well, it makes sense, you know, a Russian guy would be, or a Ukrainian guy would be flying a fulcrum. Which is MiG-29. And I'm exactly following what they're saying. I'm going exactly northwest. Three, three opening. The only difference is I'm not armed here. I don't have any targeting system, but I'm following what they're saying, basically. <laughs> That's F-16. The fulcrum would be the MiG-29. Because the F-16 have the laser targeting system. Maximum track north, bullseye 170, 32, 30, 000, outlaw space, He did say 30,000 feet. There we go, 30,000 feet. Three, one, five, ten, two thousand tracks out 
Benefest is uh, having a 088 skin. So we're switching roles, so you'll be with the blue air again. So switching roles, and uh, Tiger 1 is red, uh, red blocks, uh, reset blocks. So I can omit the uh, snip again. Yeah, I'll Tiger 1 will be a Bad box. One zero one nine. One nine seven nine. Three zero opening. Five seven five seven. Come on, five seven. Tag one. I check your mods code. One eight zero thirty three twenty one thousand. Still in contact. Bulls are one seven five thirty five nineteen thousand. Sniff full come still in contact. Why thirty nine thousand? Bulls are one seven zero thirty six nineteen thousand. Oh, it wants to go to nineteen thousand. Group track north, rules are 170, 34, 16,000, spades, a sniff full, come still in contact. Now 16,000? Jeez. Alright, alright, here you go. Two bombers, Lolo, Stranger, Bra, 2105, 2,000 feet, track south. Better contact. Bellock. Track 350, bullseye 173, 31, 14,000, speed sniff, full come still on contact. Show over maneuver northwest, bullseye 175, 25, 12,000, speed sniff, full come. When the uh, missed one is turning back uh, in again for another try, uh, it's uh, due to the class there low, it's uh, hardly uh, possible to get the... Uh, This guy is driving me crazy. First, he wants me to go to 14,000, then 12,000. Give me a fire up of the area. Yeah, it's a solid in the cast uh, around, I think, uh, fly double zero five zero ish. And above that, it's uh, clear in a million. Uh, Control start at uh, 305. But there's uh, also marking in the turns starting at uh, fly double two zero zero. Let's just uh, below the horizon. Zero and opening. 
Hey, what's up, Jose? What's up, engineer? How you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, I tweaked it up. I uh, got the new drivers from my NVIDIA GeForce, and uh, I also got a BIOS ASUS drivers installed on top of the uh, the new Windows update. And of course, flight simulator. And also the update of uh, World Update 7, which was uh, installed as well. Now it seems to be running pretty good. Northwest, Bullseye 180, 38, 21,000, outlaw, space, single contact. Oh my god, this guy's driving me crazy. He, he just wants me to go up and down. Now he wants to go 14,000 feet. Hey, what's up, Anthony? How you doing, brother? Well, I'm glad you finally got it to work, brother. Have fun. Money Penny will show you around, man. <laughs> She's the expert at the uh, GTA. Group track 35 single bullseye 185 27 22,000 hostile flanker single back. I will target it so 184 25 29 uh, 19,000 hostile. Well, what the rock star needs to right fix right is. Uh, and I reckon between two other tanks, uh, this tank is just situated uh, just east. There's a, uh, what looks like more uh, rough area, like uh, dunes or uh, grass. What the Rockstar needs to uh, fix double, double is the uh, microtransactions. Like, microtransaction is the one problem that they have. Not, that's the biggest problem, the microtransactions, you know? People buy out everything and then they just... Very short Going to mayhem, you know. <laughs> or they should at least balance uh, the multiplayer. Like, people who are higher level, ranking level, and they got a lot of stuff. I don't think they should be matched up with the people who are, like, just starting to... Uh, to play like it needs to be Group balanced north, it needs to be a even field 15, 6, you know. but look uh, rockstar is not going to change rockstar has been uh, eight, eight, rockstar has been a uh, clusterfuck since 2013 with a multiplayer man uh they just care about the money they don't really care about the experience they only care about the money and that's it I want to go put out 180, 18, Guys, now 6,000 feet? Are you kidding me? Alright, 6,000 feet. I do 305, 6,000, hostile flanker, single contact.
about 6,000. Jesus, I, I heard you the first time, 6,000 feet. I would be the worst pilot. I would be upset if some yayo in the ATC is telling me go to 6,000 feet all the fucking time. Like, I don't know. I have to be at 6,000 feet. Tag one belt. From your uh, feature contact with the assist. Yeah, I'm going to check with him now. Okay. Cool. They're just uh, finishing up their lost attack, and then they will uh, flow north. I guess we'll set up a uh, gap in the north. I'll definitely check it out when you update it, uh, when you upload it. And Tiger 1 and 2 will anchor uh, from the uh, center south point of TRA 1 and 2, and then I'll load for 15. In heading uh, 098. In meantime, I'm going to check out that AH-64D, uh, possibly tomorrow or the next day. That thing is like uh, very difficult uh, to fly, but uh, I'm going to need to study it for about a day or two before I can fly it. Two is actually off the right. Just two, I will give it one more shot with the uh, what? Will be the last uh, shot. Confirm you're able. Happy to test the uh, green. What do I got? Turn seventy-three uh, nautical miles. That's an I'm off twice because of the weather. Confirm and just read information. In flight, I cannot change the laser code of the bomb. Oh, that's funny. So I'm happy to try uh, that one. See if the weather is a little bit better then. I'm sure she'll get over it, man. Still going to your restrictions. Uh, push green, push green. Is that the one, is that the cousin you were showing me on the photo? Blonde hair? What the hell's going on with this guy? Did he die or something? Central PCR 6 approved, QNH 1019, and report before crossing 09. Oh. Uh, this is just a practice demo. We're not hitting any targets, we're just pretending they're targets. Wow, this guy definitely died. I don't hear him anymore. This one, only the uh, number two will come uh, in a couple of minutes. You all right? Four, six, seven thousand. All right, seven thousand. Box posted contact, posted call, so we cycle one, five, zero, one. I really don't worry about what my cousins think, man. I barely talk to them. Uh, 
outside Delta S1 up to 8, mean level up to 660, walk with control to Angels 10, for the TRA 1010 Alpha, you're clear 1570 and positive control sense. Nice, uh, weather will not work. I wouldn't worry much about the uh, about that stuff, man. I mean, I can't speak for you. I can only speak for me. But uh, I don't get choked up about what other people think. Uh, I really don't. Life is too short for me to worry about whether I upset somebody, whether I... Uh, I don't care if you're upset. That's your problem, not mine. You know. Two eight four twenty one twenty seven thousand twenty ninety. Why twenty seven thousand now? Jeez, I'm almost at three hundred thirty nautical miles. Now it's 19,000. Bullseye 220 55 outlaw spades. Tiger 2, that's bra 200 58 19,000. Now it's 19,000. Come on, man. Make up your mind. Belmox, Belmox, drill group, range 17 and 2,000. Outlaw spades, show contact. The Belmox new picture, two groups, range 20. Lead group, bullseye 30217 25,000. Hostile, single contact. Ah, for Falcom is 25,000. Trail group, oh, range shit. 19, bullseye 324, 33, 26,000, hostile, single contact. Well, I don't see any hostiles here, so... <laughs> Picture signal, group, bullseye 225, 49, 21,000, outlaw space. I'm already at 21,000, dude. Relax. I swear to God, I would be the worst Air Force pilot. I would just cuss everybody out. Bullseye 317 31 25,000 I would piss everybody off. <laughs> Two groups, a range 21, lead group bullseye 265 16 28,000 hostile, single contact. That's for the, uh, the Tigers. Group range 21, bullseye 305, 26, 29,000, postal, single contact, both groups track south. Tigers are the F-16s, group, that's not do with me. Box, has it been spies? 21, bullseye 302, 25, 31,000, postal. Lead group maneuver. Got the same. Airbox, trail group bra 010 28, 29,000. Yes. 28, 28, 21,000, hold down. Airbox, copy, hold down. Relay to the opponents, then they switch Bravo file. Yeah, Bravo, why don't you stay on that? That formation. Leave the Falcom alone. Alex. Uh, Windows 2 will be uh, switching to the next mission. I'm a lone wolf. Sorry, we couldn't get there, but the weather is too bad. I'm a lone wolf, man. I'm not gonna regroup. Do all styles, then by checking region. 
That's why they call me Ghost of Kiev, bro. I'm a Ghost of Kiev. I don't follow any missions, man. I do my own thing. <laughs> I'm like Maverick, dude. Exactly like Maverick. I don't. I don't listen to. No, I don't read. Copy that negative. Not reading. Roger. Why don't you say Roger? What kind of visa are you, dude? Oh, God. Yeah, thanks, sir. You couldn't uh, get him off. Go ahead, Fisto. Roger, Fisto. Roger, Fisto. Roger, Fisto. Two hundred eighty nautical miles. That was clean. Please lay off me. Which state do you reason for the uh, hostile then? Storm maintain view of RBFC. Roger, Paul in a space and we have to omit the sniff. Copy. I guess that's a little bit. Double. Storm, I'm now in a left hand. Double. 268 nautical miles. There's two BAMOX now providing positive control service at the uh, set clock 2422 at fist one recycle 2421. The departure arrow 1, path 300 for 190. Arrow 1, Rapid Lord, Mount Mir identified. I'm passing up to 3000 feet left turn on navigation in mountain range and maximum flight of 150. No. Arrow 1, passing 3000 left direct on course up to 150. 3,000 is too low, bro. I got 260 nautical miles. 3,000 feet is too low, man. Back north, bullseye 31031, 25,000. Two contacts, hostile. Welcome back. That's for the Tiger formation, not for me. Flankers, hostile. Timebox. At Fist 2, you clear deltas 1 up to 8, mean sea level to 660, broadcast control to Angels 10. For the TRA 10, 10 alpha, you cleared 1501 up to positive control sense. Fist 2. Eight, echelon northeast. Bravo Fleet Group, Bullseye 210, 49, echelon 2000, Outlaw, Space, Silver Contact. 210, 49, Outlaw, Space. Contact, Bullstar. 3000, Outlaw, Space, Silver Contact. Bambox, Trail Group, Range 16, opening. Lead group, bullseye 302, 24, 25,000, hostile, single contact, tracks out. Bambox, trail group, maneuver, range 18, 27,000, hostile, single contact. And two. Southwest, hostile, tiger. Tiger. At Romeo is now fully active again for new players, so avoid Romeo 4. So the Tigers are the, the F-16 Falcons. And they're doing a practice, so it's not do with me. I'm a fulcrum. Bambox, two groups, range 19, lead group, bullseye 291, 21, 28,000, hostile, single contact, tracks out. My mission here is just to uh, to test MiG-29 to see 26, if it's operable, 29, if I can single deliver it from uh, long distance.
Dan moet ik zeggen, lead roepen, Rotte Campbell zei 210412000, hostile flanker. Kijk hem aan. Target, lead roepen, hostile, bullseye 21141, 24000, Fox. Dan mag ik zeggen, die trilroepen snel, azimuth 11, 23000, hostile flanker, track north. Oh really? A Dude, flanker? Range 19, bullseye 31824, 28000. Dude, flanker, that's the SU-57. That's a Russian SU-57, flanker. Bebox, lead group leave for Tiger 1. Zero zero nineteen twenty nine thousand postal single compact. Alright, I'm about two seventeen uh, flanker. Nautical miles. Almost there. Room at eleven twenty three thousand hostile flanker beam east. They're fighting the SU fifty sevens. Holy Look shit. Maneuver. A fake SU fifty seven. Groups and mirror beam in, bullseye 220 and 23 and 27,000, hostile flankers. Arrow 019, clear to the range. Arrow 019, copy. I'm going to try and get these LGTRs off while there's still a little bit of daylight. Passing. 5,000, hostile flanker. 30,000. The south, 31,000, postal, single contact maneuver. I think they forgot about me. Why not? With Olfgaard, 1600 feet, visibility is 10 plus, the wind is 0, 7, 0, 1, 9, 15, 2, 3. Copy, any uh, LGTRs today? Only one. Postal flank, a single contact. I want to spin, lead group. Box, elite group maneuver, trail loop drag. Box, elite group, bulls at 294, 16, 23,000, hostile, single contact, maneuver hold. Transport you to the weather for the LCTR. Top one, but uh, it did not hit, confirm. 38,000, we clear. Dat was weer kribbel, zei 29,000, hostile, flanker. So they're shooting flankers, a fake flankers. Bullseye 224, 41, 22,000, hostile, flanker. Dat was still group, range 8, opening, drag. In and above, 1, 3, 13 and below. So what's my job? Just to land the fucker. <laughs> maneuver. That's why they didn't arm me. They just. Elite group maneuver track. They maneuver just want me to land the sucker. Two nine five twenty two twenty eight thousand hostile single contact. They're protecting me out there. Windmill. Arrow zero one checking in. This is all fake, obviously, it's not real, but... Uh, 31,000, hostile flanker, lead group. Two shots, time out, lead group, of Tiger 1. That box, lead group, push. But it's a cool demo. Number 1, 1 below 13, and number 2 above 15. Two LGTRs for number 1, four BD-33s for number 2. 45 minutes of play time, we'd like your port code in the clear. We have ATPs, and number 1 to attacking. Over the lead group. Bullseye 301, 14, 15,000. Bullseye 30319, 27,000. Hostile, single contact. Bermox. Bermox, 236, 29, 23,000. Hostile, flanker. Tiger 1, spike range 29, 23,000. Hostile, flanker, trail group. Tiger One. All right, Tiger One. That's the F-16. That's the code name, Tiger One F-16. Yeah, 
Schmidt. He did call me MIG. What about my MIG? What about my MIG? Amox Trail Group Maneuver, Lead Group, Drag Range 12 opening. Tiger 2, Timeout, Trail Group. Amox Copy, Timeout, Tiger 2, Spike Range, Trail Group 15 and 23,000, hostile flanker. Tiger 1 is in. Trail Group, Bull, dus gaat per 185, 29 en 23,000. Tiger 1. F-16. So that means I'm clear. That means I'm clear to deliver. I'm clear to deliver. <sighs> This is probably what it would take, be something like this, to deliver these mix. You know, it would take a lot of effort. It'd be very dangerous, but it'd be a good effort. Arrow, read back from the system. One zero feet. Foxtrot uniform 282993. Friendly is northwest 790 meters. Copy 130 magnetic laser to target line and run to heading up 090 plus or minus 10. Fist are to be as well, they uh, flow uh, up from. Yep, that's right. That's top bit weather. That box, Victor Kilo is green, 2 for you, fields IFR, winds 3 for 0, 2 knots, with a visibility of 4,500 in broom. Scale layer at 1,400, overcast at 1,600, QNH 1017. Now, take weather. You're clear. This is one turn up, you're clear, direct inbound, whisk one more, part of a pre One turn up, inbound, whisk one more, pre That's uh, 1,400 feet, QNH is 1017. Well, I can't really talk about that stuff because I was really never close to any of my relatives, honestly. So I pretty much have zero relationship with my relatives. I know some of you guys have a tight relationship with your relatives, but me, I have no relationship with my relatives, like zero. So I can't really comment. One, two, zero, three, and standby, Tiger. Windmill, arrow one is uh, below the weather. I see uh, tank in the center of the base cloud out here, yeah? Or 111 nautical miles. One, two, zero, one, number two, squawk, standby. One, two, zero, one, and number two, standby. This bump flight, compact ditch mill, two nine or seven decimal two seven five, two nine or seven decimal two seven five, by now. Two nine seven two seven five. Two nine seven two seven five. I think uh, that part of this model out for uh, LTTR, so you'll have to ask the range controller. Yeah, I'm with you. 
Yeah, 94, 93 nautical miles. Almost there. We decline the purple weather. Drop the LTR purple weather. I've got it. With LTR 1. Coordinate and not a bomb on target. Well, I'm not yet clear. I got 72,000 miles. I mean, 72 uh, nautical miles, I'm sorry. Now I'm at 67 nautical miles. Forty-nine nautical miles. Forty-eight. Forty-six. Eight minutes out. I think it's eight minutes out though, for me, for sure. Back. Six feet. Fox drop to the form. Two, eight, three, four, nine, 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 one, eight, one. Northwest, nine hundred fifty meters. 
Got to be 127, laser target line, magnetic, with a run-in restriction of 090, plus or minus 10. Shoot on two. Windows now from Swiftland. Thirty uh, nautical miles. Nine seven seven. Windows for Twenty-nine nautical miles. It's enough to fit on radio check. Copy loud and clear. <sighs> Get some water. Open enough for four one. How do you read? Well, I read uh, 23 nautical miles. I see a row of three tanks oriented roughly northwest to southeast. And it currently looks like my target pod is sitting on the southeasternmost tank. Can I urge you? Oh, those guys are shooting tanks. Those guys are shooting tanks, man. With their uh, F 16s. Just for a moment, how do you leave? Windmill, I'm going to take one more spin. Windmill, you're able to tally, uh, see my sparkle. Good evening, those left, for a moment. The target. We're passing out to 3,000 feet uh, left turn, heading 240. Passing 3,000 left turn, 240, kill him on.
That's fine by me. Sure. You want to do one? I can't even hit the pickup button. Got you loud and clear. Uh, ready to copy. Now 5 off. Range descending 2 0 0 Oh no! No! Coordinates for a GPU. Oh, well. Elevation 06. Oh, that's it. The target coordinates 31 uniform. I fucked it up, dude. Post the uniform. Ah, oh, damn it. 6, 8, 5, 7. Say again, the last numbers. I cannot say again. I'm totally screwed right now, man. I'm totally screwed right now, man. Totally screwed. Ah. You see that whole afterburner thing, man. This is the bug uh, in in a in a game. You know, when you try to land, you can't properly land because as soon as you touch down, there's this afterburner bug that kicks in as soon as you wanna put on a parking brake, right? To reduce the speed, the uh, the afterburner kicks in, and it's that bug that's the issue. It's really um, it's a pain in the neck and a pain in the ass, if you will. Um, so it really sucks. unfortunately so they need to fix this uh, but overall it's a it's a good airplane it maneuvers good it runs good it flies good but it's just uh, it has issues with that afterburner man and that afterburner it's it's a very uh, serious problem because you can't really land if you can't use that parking brake. I tried to use that parking brake and you see what happened. It hit the afterburner and turned left. It turned left and then went up. So they need to fix the afterburner. This is one of the things they need to fix. If they can fix the afterburner then I think uh, this MiG-29 is like highly recommended until they fix the afterburner but right now they haven't fixed the afterbur afterburner so that bug it's still there and it only happens when you take off and when you try to land and, and that's that's one of the issues so I would wait till they patch it up till they fix it and fix this bug it really sucks that they didn't test this you know properly but it is what it is So, final conclusion is, wait for it to be patched up. Wait for this uh, MiG-29 bug to be fixed. Once they fix that bug, well then, you shouldn't have any problem flying it, you know. But right now, with this bug, uh, you're going to have nothing but problems trying to take off and trying to land because of that bug afterburner that kicks in automatically. 
like as soon as you press the parking brake the afterburner kicks in they need to code this properly they need to patch this up they need to fix it and I'll give you the example actually here I'll give you the example I'm gonna restart uh, from a runway and I'm gonna be eating my food I'm not gonna be using anything hands-free and you're gonna see that automatically this thing will start flying automatically and I don't have any uh, autopilot on none of, none of that none of that it's on no autopilot none of that shit uh, but it but it for some reason it kicks in the afterburner kicks in and you'll see it in a minute here I'll show you the afterburner kicks in here we go look at this it's gonna start by itself look hands free look I'm not doing anything it's taking off automatically I'm not doing I'm eating my food and then it turns off turns off and turns on and now he wants to land and I'm not doing anything so they need to fix this bug man And it's a shame that they haven't tested it. And look, it's going to turn on by itself again. Look. Look. It's going to start turning on by itself. Check this out. It's going to take off again. Look at this. They need to fix this, man. This is bad. So, there you have it. So, you know, I'm not bullshitting you. You know, I'm telling you the truth. You know, this is a serious bug that needs to be fixed. I would wait till they patch it up, till they, till they fix it. Uh, yeah, man. It's, it's, this is one problem I have with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And this is why... I'm leaning more towards DCS than this. I mean, come on, man. You can't release a plane in this kind of a state, you know? You just can't. If it was free, okay. Fine. If it's free, fine. Whatever. But, you're charging people $20 and you can't fix the basic 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 thing you know come on they should have had a uh, patch update over the weekend yesterday they should have had patch update for this come on I'm tired of these lazy developers I mean these money whores they're everywhere man The only developer that's not lazy, it's the Matt Wagner from Eagle Dynamics. Eagle Dynamics, they put heart and soul 
to make sure that they recreate the most realistic representation of a jet fighter or helicopter AH-64D Apache or the F-18C Hornet or you know F-16 uh, Falcon or F-15 Eagle Striker so they're always trying to put heart and soul to make sure that they deliver the best possible most realistic jet fighters and I think this is why DCS is the best place to be uh, flight simulator it's really for um, Cessnas jetliners commercial 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 airplanes private and commercial airplanes and I think that's what flight simulator it's really all about but when it comes to these military jets they're just bad man you know you gotta go to DCS if you want the military jets if you want the military flying simulator you gotta go to DCS yes it's expensive yes it's expensive but you get what you pay for here you pay for it and you get nothing you get some bullshit like this you know. so and this has been going on for a couple of years now with the F-16 with the F-15 with the F-14 even with the F-18 there were some issues and problems F-22 had issues and problems they had to be patched up it took them a month a month and a half to patch up a, a thruster bug you know it's just unacceptable unacceptable and then they're charging people thirty dollars forty dollars dude that's a price of a game you want to charge people forty dollars for a price of a game and the bloody airplane doesn't even work properly half the features are missing uh, come on you know this is not a Grand Theft Auto if this was a Grand Theft Auto okay fine you can put whatever you want to put but this you know this is a simulator right supposed to be a simulator to simulate well then simulate and this is Asobo's fault I don't blame the guy who's trying to make money and he puts in some airplane to make some money I blame the Asobo and Microsoft for not testing it before they accept it to be put on the marketplace to be sold. They need to test these airplanes before they put it on the marketplace to be sold. We used to do this thing. We used to test, you know, DLCs and other products before we put it out there. But it seems to be now that no one's testing anything. They're just putting whatever. Just put it out there. And that's not right, man. That's not right. You know. We'll see what the X-Plane 12 is going to do this year. You know. Hopefully X-Plane 12 will get it right. But honestly, guys, if you want the military jets, if you want the military flying experience, you got to go to Digital Combat Simulator World. You got to go to DCS. You got to go to Eagle Dynamics. They do a fantastic job with Lockheed Martin and Northrop. They do a great job representing these uh, jet fighters and helicopters in the best possible way. The most realistic way. You know. Flight Simulator is just for fun. It's just a fun, fun experience with some semi semi-realistic uh, prop engine propeller you know commercial private planes if you want to fly a commercial or a private plane then flight simulator is for you if you want to fly a jet fighter then the DCS is for you so if you're into jet fighters go to DCS anything military related go to DCS if you just want to have a semi-realistic experience flying these 
uh, you know, turbo engine, you know, single prop, uh, twin engine, uh, Cessnas, and private Lear jets, and, 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 you know, commercial airliners, then flight simulator, it's for you. But if you want the military jet experience, you got to go to DCS. And that's the bottom line. And I'll, and I'll just leave it at that, guys. How do I know this? Because I've been doing, covering Microsoft Flight Simulator now for two years. Two years I've been covering Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I'm pretty much hands-on with what's available uh, and the differences between other simulators and the Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I've done two years of coverage of Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm telling you stay away from the military jets because obviously Microsoft doesn't care they only care about the money they don't really give a shit if we get a proper military jet you know if you want the proper military jet if you want the proper military helicopter you have to go to DCS You have to go to DCS. Yes, DCS, it's expensive, but you get what you pay for. Yeah, man, I covered it since it came out in, uh, in 2020. 2020, August, when it came out. And uh, they had nothing but problems when it came out on the PC. It came out on the PC first. The problems with the download... The game doesn't download properly. Uh, it seems to be an error. People cannot get past 50%. They have to restart and re-download again. It was a nightmare. It was a total nightmare. It was the worst launch of any game I have ever seen. Nothing but issues and problems and problems and issues and updates and updates and issues and issues and problems and problems. And problems. And then comes along Xbox version 2021, last year, in July. Problems and problems. People cannot connect to the servers. Servers are kicking them out. Uh, they cannot connect their Thrustmaster. Joystick's not working properly. Da -da 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 -da. Nothing but issues and problems, man. Like two years of problems. And Microsoft has this tendency to flash billions of dollars, you know, buying out Bethesda, buying out all these other companies, flashing that money. Why don't you use a small percentage of that money to fix and help Asobo fix this game so it works properly? But sadly to say, sadly to say, after two years, the game is still broken. Sadly to say. Yeah. Man. And I'm most likely going to move out to, uh, to X-Plane 12 when it comes out this this September or October I'm most likely gonna move out to explain 12 or DCS for that matter you know you know if you're gonna do it something do it right and DCS is DCS is doing it right DCS has a multiplayer they have a real pilot they have private lobbies where you can fight against your friend in a multiplayer, uh, yes, it's expensive, but you know you get what you pay for. So, I mean, if you're gonna spend this kind of a money, might as well spend it on DCS. But at least you know what you're getting. You're getting a proper, real flight combat experience, unlike this crap here. You know, can't even properly land. Can't even take off properly. Well, yeah. but that's Microsoft for you, man. That's Microsoft.
Non. It's always been like this, man. It never changed. Because they only care about money. They don't give a shit. It's like Rockstar. Rockstar doesn't care about the user experience. Rockstar doesn't care about the user experience. Rockstar only cares that you're going to spend money and buy all the gadgets, buy all that shit. Because it's addictive. And they're exploiting people by putting these ridiculous prices of the money shark so you can buy, I don't know, 20 million for like $150, 30 million for $300, and just waste that money. Same shit. NBA 2K, same shit. FIFA, same shit. Madden, same shit. Nothing but money whores, man. They're not developers, they're money whores. Fucking everywhere, man. Goddamn money whores. It's like a brothel of, of money whores, of video games, developers, studios, pimps. Really fed up, man, with this whole money whoring uh, gaming industry. Oh yeah, WWE, same thing, money whoring, same shit, yeah, all of them. Right now, the best, right now, the best option, it's Gamefly. Gamefly, not only do they give you ability to rent four games at a time, but you can keep it and buy it for half a price. For like $28, I can buy Battlefield. For $28, I can buy Call of Duty. For $28, I can buy Gran Turismo. And then I can rent some other games. I can get coupons, rewards... Gamefly, honestly, is the most reliable way of playing video games in North America. We're so lucky that we live here in North America because we have Gamefly. And Gamefly, honestly, is the most relevant right now. I, I don't know why I, it's beyond me. It is beyond me why people don't want to jump into Gamefly. If you love the bloody game, keep it. But you can keep it for half a price. You don't have to pay the full price. Keep it for half a price. I'm telling you. I know you live in UK, so this doesn't concern you, engineer. You live in the United Kingdom. But for people who live here in the United States, I think you would be a fool not to take the advantage of Gamefly. You would be a total fool even if you have money, you can save that money for something else. Gamefly is the most relevant right now. Gamefly should have commercials all over the television. Seriously, why people are not jumping into Gamefly, it's beyond me. I guess people like paying. Paying $100, $120 for one bloody game, some collector's soundtrack, photo book bullshit you know, edition. Not smart, guys. Not fucking smart. <laughs> Not fucking smart. That's some kind of a uh, disease. Uh, addiction. It's an addiction. Collectors. Being a collector. You shouldn't collect everything, dude. Not every game's worth your collection. Not every game should be in your fucking shelf. You know? Uh, but... Um, I don't know, man. I don't get it. Well, here's the thing. They would love to expand. But they can expand because they're not having that many people sign up. If they had a millions of people, 
marching in to sign up, if there was a huge demand of hundreds of millions of people, they would expand because they would have enough money to build more warehouses, to build more headquarters, to expand their business to Europe, right? But they can't do that because right now they're limited. They don't have that many, uh, let's say roughly 70,000 or let's say 80,000 uh, subscribers. That's not enough. They got to hit a million mark, man. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't understand why people are not jumping on a game flight. I guess people like wasting money, I guess. I don't know. On the games that they're barely going to play. They're just going to sit there, collect dust, you know? Like Elden Ring, you're done with that shit. You're not going to fucking play it again. You've been there, done that, accomplished it. Put it in a fucking duster. Might as well put it in a fucking trash bin. I'm saying. I'm just saying. You know? Not every game deserves to be on your shelf. No one seems to be using their brain these days. Everybody's just wasting money, man. You know? And that's why these developers are so lazy. Because they know there's a bunch of simps out there. They don't give a fuck. You know? Anyway. I'm preaching to the fucking wall. It's a waste of energy, man. It's the waste of air and oxygen. You can't change majority of uh, majority of fucking idiots out there. You can't change their fucking mind. You know. <clears throat> anyway, I gotta get going. Majority of fucking... Yeah, majority of idiots, bro. Majority of idiots out there. Wasting the money they don't have on the shit they don't need. You know? And then they go out and bitch and moan. Why this game sucks? Well, you know what? If you paid for the game, you shouldn't complain. And enjoy it. You should take it up the ass. And you should enjoy every little bit of it. You should enjoy it, because you asked for it, you paid for it, you should enjoy it. <laughs> you know, don't complain. You know? But people like to do that shit. They like to twist that around, you know. So there's a new, uh, there's a new slogan. If you paid for the game, don't complain. Just spread your cheeks and let that cock go in. Enjoy it, because you paid for it. You should fucking enjoy it. Anyway, I gotta get going, man. It's like talking to a fucking wall, dude. It's, it's pointless. People are what they are. We got some dumb motherfuckers floating around this planet, obviously. Especially in the gaming community. It is what it is. All right, I got to get going.